I still have not posted the last one actually, but we're back. We're doing another fantasy draft today. I'm trying to record videos in as bulk as I can basically right now. So we are going to be doing a sniper only offense draft today, which is another sort of classic one I start off with. And then for defense, I have to take offensive defensemen because it's just kind of the way it goes. Snipers obviously is an offensive player type. So yeah, in that sense. And then goalies can just be once again, anything. So I'm going to randomize the team here. Let's see who we land on today. It's going to be the Nashville Predators. All right. I still don't understand why I can't do a fantasy draft with the expansion team. You know, like, why can't I just add a 30-second team and do a draft? Just a uh, little piece of advice there. An idea, if you will. I hope we get a decent pick here. I actually don't even know what I really prefer. I don't know if I want an early one or if I'd actually kind of rather have a late one and try to... Get like back to back. Okay, well, we're right in the middle. So neither. Essentially, all of our picks will be just as equally far apart as each other. Matthews probably would have been nice. But we can probably get Hattrick Kane. So that is a great consolation prize. Man, I feel like getting center snipers is actually going to be tough. Tarasenko, I might just have to pick him up. He should be one, right? Yeah. We have two right wingers now, but... Well, actually, you know what? Is there... Two-way offensive defenseman, EK65 or Tarasenko. For cap reasons, I'm taking Tarasenko because I still want to try and remain somewhat in the cap if possible. Brent Burns, he would be a great offensive defenseman to join the team. $8 million, but it's okay. Carey Price just went, which baffles me. Who's here then? We still got Freddy88. I think I got to take Freddy because he's the highest overall here and he's only making $5 million, so it's pretty good. But what about... Robin Lehner. He's got... Mm, I'll take Freddy, fine. Is Giordano an offensive or is he two-way? He's two-way. I don't know what it is with right-wingers being snipers, but Dadanov is a right-winger and he's a sniper. So I'm probably just taking the best players I can get, essentially, at, at the moment. Is Radulov a sniper as well? No, he's a playmaker. Okay, so you know what? I'm actually going to do this and I'm just going to go this way. Offensive defenseman and Keith Yandel. 6.3 milli, 86 overall. Cap space is going to be rough, probably. Well, you know what? We're not doing too bad so far. Mike Hoffman, left winger slash right winger, is a sniper, though, and he doesn't have a contract at the moment, so I'm guessing I'm going to have to sign him. Hopefully, I remember to do that. Phil Kessel, another right wing sniper, man. What is going on? I mean, fine, but holy crap. This is the only reason I would have preferred Matthews, who I believe is listed as a sniper in this game. He should be, but it was the only reason I would have preferred him over Patrick Kane hands down is because he's a center sniper and then yeah there we go Jeff Skinner also a sniper you know what his salary is ridiculous I'm gonna pass on him JVR is also making a lot of money how much is Eberly making 5.5 right winger again at least he's a left winger but man come on Cam Atkinson and Gus are both snipers so I guess I will take Gus Kovalchuk's a sniper we have not drafted a single centerman yet just keep that in mind i'm just gonna i'm specifically sorting by centers right now we got to try and find one there's got to be a center sniper here somewhere i think there we go we get yarn crook 82 overall 2 million sure we also only have two defense so far this is this is not going as planned whatsoever really calvin dehan is the best <laughs> offensive defense we have on the table right now for pair number two I think I'm, I'm still going to try. Obviously, I said this in the last one, too. I'm going to try my best for cap, but right now it's looking like it's going to be a tough one. Matthias Janmark, sniper, center, 2.5, or sorry, 2.2 million, 80 overall. I suppose we don't really have much of a choice. We also need a backup goaltender, so maybe I should do that now and get that out of the way. Henrik Lundqvist, I really want to pick him, but man, did he... Crap the sheets last time. I think I'm going to pick up Halak. All right, I, I really need defensemen. So Goligoski, he's 83 overall, 5.4. I think we're just going to have to eat the cap because <laughs> we really need defensemen. Our second pair cannot just drop down to like 81, 80. So basically, we need one more left winger, two more center, and two more defensemen. I'm not going to take Carter because he's making 5.2 million, which is absurd. You know what? No, I'm not going to do it. The next best is Dominic Simon, who's making league minimum. 79 overall, not too bad. Brad Hunt is an offensive defenseman, making league minimum. Sure. So two more forwards and one more defenseman. 
we're done here. So maybe I should just take, if he's still here, should I just take him? Because we're not going to go too far over the cap, which again is basically my end goal, just not to go crazy over it. So I, I guess might as well at this point. I think I still have to sign those other two to a contract as well, which could be intriguing to try and pull off. There we go. Jesper Fast, another right winger. We have the wingers that can play right and left. So we don't really have to worry too much about that, which is nice. I think that's a new feature in this game where they are like left wing slash right wing. Not all of them, but some. And now we just need to find our final defenseman. So who will it be? Offensive defenseman, Andre Sequeira, 1.5 million, 80 overall. Sure, why not? We came in still above the cap, actually. We're surprisingly in the zone there, but we still have to sign those two zero year contracts which are going to put us over I bet if it even lets me sign them I don't know this is going to be interesting I basically took a risk seeing that they run zero years and just hope for the best so hopefully it automatically signs them to a one year or something otherwise we might be screwed and I might have to go to free agency and just find a sniper or pick someone from the AHL all right here's our team looks pretty solid to me and I think it was okay so Hoffman that's a pretty big one actually and Kovalchuk are the two that I believe were not signed to a contract. So what does it mean when it's, does that mean like we tendered an offer or something somehow, even though that's not really a thing, or are we just getting them on that salary for this year? I accidentally hit view lines again, so let's just see, wow, what Anaheim has this time. They've got McDubstep, Oshie, and Gensel, Toffoli, Nuge, and Lindholm. That's a crazy top six. They've got Krug and Gustafson, Letty, and Edler, Chara, oh my, wow, this team is going to be good. Well, I said that last time and they weren't really, were they? But didn't they have Varlamov last time as well? Well, it shows, oh, no, don't even think about it. it oh, that is bad. That, we are going to do awful. 100% we're going to do awful. But it shows Hoffman and Kovalchuk here, so I guess we get to use them for the year. All right, this bottom line is just going to be rough with minus three. It's going to be minus one. At least we got the top two to zero. Oh my goodness gracious. I did not even think about chemistry. There's literally nothing I can do back here to bump it up. Like it's just, oh, I can move Brad Hunt up here with Keith Yandel. That would work apparently. Wow, that is ugly. Yeah, we are not going to be a good team at all. We are going to get destroyed. All right, my initial prediction is 30 wins and I, I don't know. We probably will get a lot of points. I'll say Patrick Kane puts up Let's say 91 points. Because of that chemistry though, I really do not foresee this going well whatsoever. But maybe I'm wrong. Time to see how much this chemistry actually affects lineups. And I'm going to say right out the gate here, it looks like it does quite a bit. Okay, we're starting to get away here a little bit. But now that I said something, usually this is what happens. We get pulled right back down. The Islanders fire their coach. I thought I was going to say Marish. <sighs> That did not come out at all. I thought it was going to say Paul Maurice. And I was like, I didn't know they used real coaches. But no, it is Maurice Chaveri. Wow, we are doing much better than I expected. One more win and we are already where I thought we would have been at the end. And we're not even at the deadline. Any big trades you want to tell me about? I'm pretty sure I have blockbuster trade notifications on. So I should see at least one, no? Come on. Really? This game's not even going to show me any trades. Sorry, we've temporarily vaulted trades as they are broken. I can't believe we ended up doing this good. Like, I am really shocked. Are we going to get 50 wins? Chicago? No, we're not. So close. Very close. Well, let's check on some team stats here. So Patrick Kane put up 99 points. He was one away from that 100 mark. I'll just go to the entire league. We finished or sorry, first in our division and we finished sixth in the NHL. Calgary Flames, Tampa Bay Lightning are going to be right up there. 52 wins for the Flames. Holy smokes. Patrick Kane had 99. Phil the Thrill had 79. Yandel had 71. Holy. Tarasenko with 69. Soderberg with 59. Wow. All right. That is Crazy. Our goalies, Freddie, 39, 23, and 3 with 4 shutouts and a 900, 294. But the real story here is Halak. 10, 5, and 2, 2 shutouts, a 925, 230. I'm sorry, Hank, but Halak was a good choice. Well, it's about that time. Let's get first rounded once more here in a fantasy draft. Okay, don't get my hopes up too much here. I see what you're doing, EA. I see what you're doing, and I don't like it. You know, I know what you're doing right now, mm. and I don't like it. 
We actually made it past the first round. I'm in disbelief. But let's keep it going. Here we go. Minnesota Wild, round two. Oh, no. Yeah? Oh, no? Oh, no? Wow. Wow. At least we made it past round one. At least we made it past the first round. And the team that put us out wins the Stanley Cup. So, there we go. I want to see what their team consists of. Fill the frickin' thrill. 15 points in 11 playoff games. I love that for you. But, uh, I don't want to go here, actually. Well, I do want to check the awards, but... Foist, I want to go to contracts and see what Minnesota drafted. So, Nashville, no. Minnesota, here we go. They got... Sebastian Aho, Duncan Keith up to 88 overall. Holy. 86 for McAvoy, Monaghan, Atkinson, Kapanen, Pionk, Yamamoto. Their team's not that outstanding. They got Bishop. I don't know why they did so well. Must be the chemistry. You know what I'm saying? Or the whatever synergy, whatever that line stuff is called. I think it's chemistry. Well, here's the awards. Let's go through them quick. Team awards and individual. Patrick Kane with the Art Ross. Good stuff. He led the league with 99 points. That's kind of surprising. I thought there would have been somebody with 100, especially in a fantasy draft, but apparently not. I don't really understand why they don't use real coaches in this game either, by the way. Is that is that like a completely different contract or a whatever they would have to sign to get the coaches to be able to use them in the game or what's up with that? Nothing too, well, I guess Chicago moved up a few spots, but the Islanders, they get number one. And that's where they were. So the lottery did not really change the number one result this time around. Is there going to be no retirements again? I don't understand why that happens. Why is there no one retiring? Is it going to be Arati again, the number one pick? Yes, it is. High Elite 70 overall. And then we've got Waters. And then we've got... Mm-hmm. That guy. All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching another fantasy draft. Once again, leave comments down below and like each other's comments so I know what draft you guys want to see next. And, you know, while you're down in the comment section, you might as well hit that subscribe button and the like button because that would be straight fire. All right. I appreciate all of you. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.